How nice is this? A brand new home. Someone's dream has become a reality. And the reality is there's still a few problems like there is in every home. Take the side paths. If you go and do a solid path, you're just creating a lot of moisture next to your house. If it's a damp and dark area, when it rains, the water can't get away and you don't want moisture up to the side of your building, then things start to rot. Stepping stones are a great alternative. They're cheaper, easier, and they look fantastic. And the water can go through the pebbles that are around the outside. One side here gets no sun, the other one bakes in it. So a path, well, it's not gonna die on you, it's just gonna look good. And the end result, well, it's much better than the dirt that's here. I know Danny would have a field day running that through the new floorboards. How can we completely transform this area from this to this? And the reason why steppers work better than a full solid paved path are pretty simple. There's an ag line here picking up all the water from this garden bed that's high in the house. If it wasn't there and you had a solid path, that water would come in here sit here and eventually penetrate this wall and go into the house. You can see how damp it is here already. So the water will come in, go around the steppers, through the gravel, into that drain and away from the house, solving the problem. And around the corner, there's a couple of amenity boxes. If you're paving a solid path, you'd have to cut around it and it still wouldn't look very nice. With the steppers, you stay away from the house and there's no cuts whatsoever. So it's easier and it looks smarter. Now the first thing you need to do is work out how big a space you want between your steppers. I find the easiest way to do it is put the first one down and the last one down and then work out what's got to go in between it. Now you can do the maths, work out how many steppers you want and then divide the area by the amount. So whether it be six or seven or eight in an area like this, you might end up with gaps from 100 mil to about 250 mil. But I find the easiest way to do it is grab a foot model. This my friend is Carl. Carl, say hello to everyone. Carl. Yeah, they really don't care. They're just looking at your legs. Mate, what I want you to do is just gently step out from there, time it so that you hit the middle of that step down there, and I'm gonna mark either of your feet. Now, it's not a race, and I don't want great big steps. I just want comfortable little ones. You ready? Now, if that's the center of our steppers, it should be nice and even. The simple thing about this is you can lay them all and just move them with a tape measure to make sure they are all exactly the same. You can't get it wrong because the dots don't lie. Now what you really need to concentrate on here is setting up your string line nice. I've got it level which means all my steppers across the front of the house will be laid level. I'll still have to check each one to make sure they're level across but I can guarantee that they're level this way. Now the mud mix it's just bricky sand and cement. Four parts sand, one part cement. It's got enough fat in it that's gonna to stick to the paver, but it's got enough give in it that when I tap it with the mallet, it's gonna give and not break the paver underneath me. Now the paver we're putting down is called Eurostone. This one here is Prague. It's a nice charcoal color. What I really like about it is it's been shot blast. So it's not just dead flat. It's got a bit of texture to it and lots of different colors of gray in there. And it's great for around a pool, a courtyard, any pedestrian path because it's anti-slip. So if you do have a side of the house that's damp, this is the answer for you. It's smart and it looks good. Now house bricks 110, it works out that my gaps are 120. So it's a really good guide. Wiggle it over to my string line, but don't touch it. Check the level across. And move on to the next one. nearly finished. This is the point where you see the smiles on the homeowner's face because they've achieved so much. But it's where you need to show a little bit of patience. I wouldn't recommend putting the pebbles out right now. I'd leave it for a day. So you're not going to get your afters straight away. And the reason why, you don't want to be walking on these five minutes after you've laid them. Let them set and let them set hard. I think this is looking fantastic. The biggest tip I can give you now is make sure you sponge everything down so you get off all these little marks while they're still wet. 
If you let them dry, you might have to use a bit of acid and you don't want to be doing that. And when you're putting the pebbles out, I see people put down black plastic or weed mat. Now if your pebble's thick enough, I don't believe you need it. So I'd aim for about 100 mil of pebbles. Weeds aren't going to grow in it anyway and it's a lot easier and the plastic and the weed mat tend to come through the pebbles. And the last thing you need to do is just give everything a good hose down. The pebbles come with a lot of dust and grit on them. So when you're throwing them over the pavers and sweeping them around, you can mark them a little bit. So hose it down, they come up like new. Now some people like to seal them, I don't bother. They're just like me, they get better with age. The Eurostone has transformed an area that was a real problem child into a real beautiful part of the garden now. It's very clever, cost effective and solved a lot of problems. For more information on all my DIY projects, simply go to adbrymasonry.com.au. You can get all the fact sheets and download them from there. Plus, all the hints and tips you'll need to do the job. While you're there, check out our inspirations gallery. There's a ton of photos sure to inspire you to get out in the garden and do a job this weekend. Good luck. <laughs>